The U.S. House of Representatives approved a bill allowing insurers the option of extending policies through next year that would otherwise be banned by the Affordable Care Act. The White House says that measure would sabotage the Affordable Care Act, and the president has already vowed to veto the bill. Americans and many within the second district of Oklahoma are going to their mailboxes only to learn that the health insurance plan they liked is being canceled. In the House, we have chosen to listen to the American people through Keep Your Health Plan Act. Individuals can actually keep the plan they like, and we can clean up the damage done by this administration's failures. Aside from the consequences on individuals, business owners like me also face mounting regulations and penalties as a result of Obamacare. Small businesses provide stability to our economy and employ millions of Americans. That stability has been jeopardized by the result of Obamacare. Joining us now with some perspective and analysis from the Oklahoma's Bureau in Washington, D.C. is Chris Castile. Chris, thanks for your time today. Sure, Dave. President Obama proposed his own fix to the problem, and some Senate de Democrats have offered legislation that's different than the president's proposal on the House bill. What happens now? Well, that's that's you know the burning question, Dave. You know, it's probably going to come down to what the Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid is going to do with this Senate Democratic bill. You know, you've got the president did propose his own fix for the you know the broken promise on. Uh, you know, if you uh, like your health care plan, you can keep it. He, he's in his plan, the House plan, and the Senate Democratic plan all have kind of different aspects to them. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of nuances, but they're also meaningful. So, you know, something's going to have to emerge out of this. I'm, you know, it, I'm not sure whether the Senate Democrats who have proposed uh, their own bill are willing to just let the president you know, do this administratively or if they really want to see something in law that addresses this issue of people losing their plans. And it, it's real. Millions of people have gotten these cancellation notices. You know, I, uh, a lot of the Oklahoma members were telling me after the uh, town hall meetings in August, you know, I didn't go to a single town hall meeting where somebody didn't come up to me with a letter from an insurance company saying your policy is canceled. So that has just been, you know, a huge deal. And how do you, how do you deal with it? It, you know, without kind of, you know, affecting the basic structure of, of Obamacare and getting into to, to kind of the core elements. You know, that's, that's really kind of what the, the people who, who support Obamacare, the Democrats, are, are, are kind of trying to, to think their way through right now. Chatting via Skype with Chris Castile from the Washington Bureau out in D.C. Chris, uh, one more question for you. How much damage has Obama's broken promise done and what will be the effects on the law? Yeah, Dave. I mean, it's it's been devastating yeah, politically so far to to the president. Um, you know, his approval ratings are all time lows right now, and and it beyond that, he's not running again. But but this is affecting all of those Democrats who voted for Obamacare in in 2010, 2009, 2010, when it, when it was approved. You know, I mean, if you're a Democrat in a in a district that that could go either way. You probably voted with Republicans. There were 39 Democrats who voted today in the House with Republicans on this bill to allow insurers, you know, to keep writing these policies that don't meet the Obamacare standards. And ultimately, the concern about this whole deal is, well, you know, you've got this promise that the president made, and he made it over and over very clearly. If you like your plan, you can keep it. They've got to do something, you know, so for, to allow that because some Democrats voted for this bill because of that promise. So, but if you do that, if you allow some of these uh, policies to continue to be written that don't meet the standards of Obamacare, and those standards are like pre-existing conditions, no annual cap, um, you know, on payouts, uh, can't charge a woman more because she's a woman, those kinds of things, then you affect kind of the whole pool. And you know, as you know, health insurance, writing health insurance policy, a real delicate balance for who you get to sign up, and you know who's the healthy people, you know, subsidizing, you know, the sick and everything. And once you start to kind of mess with that basic structure, then you know the whole thing could come down. There's, you know, I remember Senator Tom Coburn uh, telling me a couple of years ago, you know, in the House. Republicans started all their repeal efforts. He's, you know, he said, you know, you don't have to repeal it. It's going to, you know, fall under its own weight. And this is the kind of thing, not just the political problems, but these these structural things we're talking about that, you know, could possibly make that that truly happen. This was uh, Obama's signature domestic policy. For so sure. Perhaps there's some legacy stuff on this, and you know, we saw the results earlier this week that only a hundred thousand six. Yeah. Uh, a little over 100,000 Americans had signed up for Obamacare in its first month of operation. Right. And they really needed a lot more than that, right? 
Right. You know, we, that, we, we hadn't even talked about the whole, you know, that, that's how pressing this, this part of it has become, the promise part has become, and that, you, you know, you and I have been speaking for five minutes without even addressing the whole, you know, rollout issue. The, the administration also came out with those figures, as you mentioned today. I mean, I think it was, what, less than 400 Oklahomans had actually gone all the way through the process. So, you know, and they've got a deadline for a couple of weeks to get, you know, the um, website working up. And who knows what's going to happen on November 30th, whether they're still going to be able to handle the demand and get the, the information processed properly. It's just, it's really been a, a pretty bad, uh, what, six weeks now since uh, October 1st for the administration. Well, at least they get to pardon the turkey next week, right? <laughs> Some good news, maybe. <laughs> Chris, thanks for your time today and your analysis. Uh, excellent information. We appreciate it. All right, glad to do it, Dave. All right, more coverage can be found on our website at newsok.com and in the Oklahoma.